We know we'll have a lot of reaction coming in also on these threats now. It is um, threats, uh, President Trump's transition team uh, that is facing, and we know confirmed right now, one of them uh, is Congresswoman Elise Stefanik talking about a bomb threat to her house that she was heading to for the holiday. Let's bring in right now founder and the president of the Article 3 Project, Mike Davis. Mike, troubling indeed. We've had two assassination attempts against uh, President-elect Donald Trump. Now we have this developing right now. I want to just catch everybody up to speed if they're joining us. So first, we had a statement coming in from the Trump fans transition team saying it was last night and this morning nominees were targeted in these violent threats to their homes, bomb threats and swatting. Okay, so we have that. Uh, the safety of those who were targeted, Trump and the entire transition team are grateful for swift action. But we're hearing now from Elise Stefanik's office, Mike, that they were heading to Saratoga County from Washington. A bomb threat came in to their home in New York State. Um, tell us about the seriousness of this, that they actually know where they're heading. She's with her three-year-old daughter for the holiday, and this comes in. Yeah, Elise Stefanik is a friend and a legal client of mine, and this is unacceptable. This is obviously a coordinated uh, 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 threats against these Trump cabinet picks and other members of Trump's incoming administration. This is unacceptable, and President Biden needs to step forward immediately and order a criminal probe immediately. His attorney general, his FBI director, his U.S. attorneys, need to step forward immediately and aggressively so this does not happen again. Absolutely. I want to know what type of protection they have. All these nominees, look at everyone that we're looking at here, and I'm sure in the coming minutes and hours we'll know some more specifics outside of Stefanik because we know that they say that we're appointees, so it's plural here. What type of protection do they have? They're all on the move to be with their families. Yeah, I mean, if you're a nominee, I, I, I know that when you have nominees before, they've had the departments and, and, and the FBI and the U.S. Marshals protect them. And if that's not happening now, that needs to happen ASAP. This is unacceptable that President Trump's uh, nominees for the incoming administration are facing doxing and bomb threats and the other threats of violence against themselves and their families. President Biden has a responsibility here. So does the attorney general, Merrick Garland. They have a responsibility to protect these nominees. They need to step forward immediately and make sure that all of these law enforcement and intel resources are deployed immediately to protect these nominees. Specifically, too, with uh, Congresswoman Stefanik, uh, she says that uh, they were heading to Saratoga County, just north, of course, of Albany. Um, New York State and county law enforcement, they responded, she says, to the bomb threat at their home. And she says she shares her best wishes to upstate New York community for a happy and safe Thanksgiving. This is something that Kathy Hochul, no doubt, could also be tapped in on to help as well in this case. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, is, it is ridiculous that this is happening. Uh, you know, when, when the FBI is deployed to go after parents outraged by gender chaos in schools or Christians praying at abortion clinics, but they can't use federal resources and state resources to protect these incoming cabinet nominees and, and other Trump appointees. I mean, it's, it's, it's inexcusable and it needs to be fixed immediately. Uh, in the statement from the Trump Vance transition team, uh, they said that they're focused on doing the work of uniting our nation by ensuring a safe and prosperous future. Uh, so here we have, again, they're trying to get down to business. The rhetoric, as you know, uh, has been very inflammatory coming from uh, the left. And also, I would say, and I know you would agree, enabled by the media, uh, when you have people who are nominated and the, the rhetoric continues to disparage these people who are real agents of change just because this is what the Americans wanted. They gave a mandate to Donald Trump. Um, what do you think about the continued sort of depiction of some of his choices? And that sort of can lead to inflammatory uh, now conversations. And now we have credible, real threats here that it has incited somebody or people, Mike. I mean, what did they think was going to happen when President Biden said that President Trump was the gravest threat to democracy and had to be stopped at all costs, and then uh, underfunded his Secret Service protection, where he almost got killed twice. Now they're not protecting, the Biden administration is not protecting these nominees for President Trump's administration. This is unacceptable. Like, if you're going to spend 
U.S. tax dollars to go protect President Zelensky, but you can't protect President Trump. That, that tells you all you need to know about President Biden and his administration. Merrick Garland should be ashamed of himself. What, what has he done? What has he done to, to, to guard these nominees? What has he uh, done to protect these nominees? Has he deployed the and FBI? Again, has he deployed well, the U.S. Marshals? What has he done? I, I go back to, as you know, even, um, you know, things that have happened with Justice Kavanaugh. And there was a, someone who wanted to kill him. And for some, you know, stroke of, you know, thank God he decided to go and turn himself in. Uh, but that was also a moment in our nation where we looked at protection. And again, just to drill down a little bit more, these appointees in the cabinet, they don't necessarily, they don't have secret service. They don't have bodyguards around them. So there's sort of a, a sense of what can they, what can be done. And it seems like it needs to be done pretty quickly, Mike, like now. Yeah. Remember what President Biden, his White House press secretary, and his attorney general Merrick Garland said. They said that People had a First Amendment right to obstruct justice by threatening and intimidating Supreme Court justices and their families outside of their homes. They didn't provide protection. Mm -hmm. They That's encouraged right. these home protests because they were deciding the Dobbs case. And then Justice uh, Alito got sent to a safe house. Another justice got sent to a, a safe house. And Justice Kavanaugh, his wife Ashley, and their two teenage daughters almost got murdered inside of their homes, right? The, 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 they talk about... Trump and his supporters being the party of violence, I, I think it's quite the opposite. I think it's Joe Biden and Democrats who are the party of violence. Yeah, the common thread there is these are all Republicans and conservatives there that are being targeted real quickly. And we're going to go out to Alana, who's tracking this. But uh, in Arizona, federal authorities have arrested a man who allegedly posted videos online threatening to kill President-elect Donald Trump and his family. Um, the charging documents only refer to Trump as individual one, uh, but this person has now been picked up. Apparently, these videos were put on Facebook in recent months, um, and he had bizarre and outlandish claims. So your reaction again to this, another person posting these videos, I mean, you know, you're at a situation where the president-elect trying to do his job. Uh, but there's law enforcement that needs to do their jobs. Every time we hear one thwarted, Mike, you wonder what else is coming down the pike. Yeah, and what's Chris Mays doing, the Arizona Attorney General? She's too busy going after Trump supporters for January 6th. Why isn't she going after this person? And I would say this, what, President Trump's going to get inaugurated on January 20th at noon. His team's going to take over immediately. And I'll tell you this, justice is coming. We're not playing this these games anymore where we have these violent threats and violent attacks from Joe Biden supporters. There's going to be accountability. And I will say that this person in Arizona, in the, according to the charging documents, recorded a trip to Glendale, Arizona, as Trump was holding a campaign rally there. Much more on this and also the threats. Mike Davis, good to have you in. Thank you for your thoughts and comments today as we can watch this story. Very serious, uh, concerning information coming out about appointees to Trump's cabinet. Thanks, Mike.